Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to the next video in the DevOps on AWS playlist. In this video, we'll work with AWS Code Deploy. Code Deploy is a fully managed development service that automates software deployments to various compute services such as EC2, ECS, AWS Lambda, and even on-premises servers. If you watched the prior videos in this playlist on AWS Code Commit and AWS Code Build, you'll recall this image which shows where Code Deploy fits into the code pipeline. So the pipeline starts with the developer writing code, then pushing to Code Commit. Code Build is then used to build and test the code to produce deployable artifacts. Now, the code for Code Deploy can come from multiple sources. If it doesn't have to be built, as in the first demo in the prior code build video where we were working with a simple HTML page, then the source can come directly from a source code repository such as CodeCommit. However, if the code does need to be built, as in the second demo in the prior video where we were working with a Java application, then it can be pulled from the repo, run through code build, and placed in an S3 artifacts bucket before being deployed. As previously mentioned, Code Deploy can deploy to resources such as EC2 instances, ECS, and Lambda. And in this video, we'll be deploying to EC2. Now, in order to deploy to EC2, the instances must be running the Code Deploy agent. And for the Code Deploy agent to perform the deployment, we need to provide an app spec YAML file to code build along with our code. This is similar to providing the build spec file to code build. We'll take a look at an app spec file shortly, but for now, let's start building out some infrastructure that we'll need for our deployment. To get started with the demo, I've created an IAM user with admin privileges and configured the user on my local machine so I can issue commands from the AWS CLI. Now, since we're focusing on code build in this demo, We'll simulate a deployment artifact being placed in an S3 bucket by code build. So to do that, I'll first show that I have no existing buckets in this account. And here we see I have no buckets. Now I'll execute a command to create a bucket named CC demo bucket in the date, passing it a region of USD to one. And here we see the bucket's been created. Now I'll add versioning to the bucket and again list my buckets and again we see the bucket was created. Now the next command I want to execute is to compress the deployment artifacts and push them to the bucket for the code build application. Now if we jump into VS Code we could take a look at the deployment artifacts which consists of an index.html file, which is a simple web page which displays the text Cumulus Cycles version 1. There's also an app spec file which provides the commands to code deploy. The file starts with a version and the operating system, and then in the files block, it specifies the source of index.html and the destination of var www html as the deployment destination on the EC2 instance. The hook section has an application stop hook which executes a script named stop server shell. Opening up the scripts folder, we could take a look at the stop server script, which checks to see if there's an existing running instance of the HTTPD service, and if there is, it stops the service. The next hook in the app spec is the before install hook, which executes the before install shell script. This script installs the HTTPD service. Next comes the after install hook, which executes the after install script, which sets the permissions on the index.html file. Then there's the application start hook, which executes the start server script, which starts the HTTPD service. And finally, the validate service hook executes the validate service script, which does a curl against the application deployed on the EC2 instance and greps for cumulus cycles. 
Now, before I can execute the command to deploy the artifacts to the bucket, I need to create the CC demo app code deploy application. So I'll jump into the AWS code deploy console and under applications, click the create application button. I give my app a name of CC demo app and for the platform, I'll choose EC2 on premises and create the application. Now I could jump back into the terminal and execute the command. Now, if we jump into the S3 console, we see our bucket. And if we go into the bucket, we see a folder for the CC demo app and inside our zip file build artifact. Next, we can move on and create our EC2 instances. But instead of jumping into the EC2 console to provision the instances, I'll show you how to do it using the AWS CLI. So the first thing we need to do is execute a command to get the VPC ID. Now I'll copy the VPC ID and save it off. Then I'll execute a command to get a subnet ID. And I'll grab the subnet ID for USDs to 1A and save it off. And now I can create a security group passing it the VPC ID. And I'll copy this security group ID and save that off. Now I'll create security group ingress rules for SSH and HTTP. Passing it the security group ID. Next, I need to create a role for EC2 to read from S3. And I've created that in a file named trustpolicy.json, which is inside of my current working folder. Then I can create an IAM EC2 code deploy role, passing it the trustpolicy.json file. Now I'll attach the role to the policy. But before I do that, I need to get the ARN for the Amazon S3 read-only access policy. Which I've specified here. So I'll execute the command. Then execute an IAM list attach role policies for the EC2 code deploy role. And we see the Amazon S3 read only access policy attached. Next, I'll create an IAM instance profile, passing it an instance profile name of web server profile. And then I'll add the EC2 code deploy role to the instance profile. And now I can move on to create the EC2 instances. First, I'll run a command to create a key pair. Then a command to get the AMI ID for an Amazon Linux 2 instance in the USD to one region. I'll copy the AMI ID, and then I need a user data file, which I'll pass in when I provision the instances. This user data is stored in a code deploy user data .txt file in my current directory. The script does a yum update, installs Ruby and wget, then makes a wget request to grab the latest version of the AWS code deploy agent from my current region. Then I'll change permissions and install it. And finally, start the code deploy agent service 
on the EC2 instance. And with that in place, we can execute the AWS EC2 run instances command, passing it the AMI ID. the number of instances, and the instance type. Here I specified the key pair I created above, as well as the IAM instance profile name. I need to pass the security group ID, as well as the subnet ID. I'm specifying a block device mappings value for an EBS volume and adding tags with a key of name and a value of web server and a key of environment and a value of dev. Now these tags are important because code deploy will use them to identify the EC2 instances we want to deploy to. Here I'm passing the user data of the file code deploy user data text and now we're ready to run our command. And if we jump over to the EC2 console, we see our two web server instances running. So now if I jump back into the console, I'll do an EC2 describe instances, piping it to an instances.json file, and then grep for public IP addresses in the instances.json file and we have our two public IP addresses for our EC2 servers. Now we could jump over to code deploy and create a deployment group. So inside of my code deploy application, I'll click the create deployment group button. I'll give the deployment group a name of CC dev servers. And here I need to enter a service role. So I'll jump over to IAM, go into roles, and create a role for code deploy. We'll take the default AWS code deploy role policy and give it a name. Now I'll jump back over to code deploy and actually I need to refresh the page. I'll enter my deployment group name again, select a new code deploy role, leave the default for in place deployments and select Amazon EC2 instances for the environment configuration. For the tags, I'll select the key of name and the value of web server and the key of environment and the value of dev. Since we've already installed the code deploy agent, I'll select never and leave the default deployment setting for all at once. I don't have an application load balancer. So I'll uncheck this box and then create the deployment group. Now with the deployment group created, I'll go ahead and create the deployment. Here I'll leave the default deployment group of our CC dev servers name. Specify that the revision type is in S3 and select the bucket. Then scroll down and create the deployment. We see that deployment status is in progress with two instances of two succeeded. And here are our deployments. Now if we go back in the terminal, I'll curl the first IP address of our server and we get our web page and curl the second IP. And we get our web page as well. 
and let's just jump into a tab in the browser and hit the IP address of one of our servers. And here we see our page displayed. So that concludes this video on AWS Code Deploy. If you found it useful, feel free to give it a like. In the next video, we'll look at AWS Code Pipeline and add automation to our pipeline. If you'd like to be notified when I add that video to the playlist, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.